Good morning. Welcome to St. Genevieve Catholic Church. We are grateful for your presence and participation at this Mass. We would like to extend a hand of welcome especially to our guests in order to respect the dignity and solemnity of today's celebration and to ensure a space for worship and prayer. Please turn off with a silent mode on all electronic devices. This time, I'd like to call your attention to the following announcements. Please join us today after our 10.30 a.m. Mass for our family day. We'll have hamburgers and hot dogs served by our nights, jump houses for the kids, face painting, photo booth, and live band. So please join us after our 10.30 Mass today. Members of our Catholic Daughters of America will be present at all Masses next weekend to promote their spring fundraiser, which is selling Mary Your Statues. Please support them with this project. On the weekend of May 5th and 6th, Father Deo Ikissa, a professor of liturgy and sacramental theology at Notre Dame Seminary in New Orleans, will be celebrating all of the weekend masses. He will be here on the mission appeal, seeking our assistance with providing support for voca vocations and seminary and programs in the Archdiocese of Kogoro, Uganda, Africa. As we begin our celebration, let us stand and join in the opening song, City of God, in 678, in our gathering of 678.
spirit they have received. Almighty and ever living God, who willed that through water the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. We please be prayed to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach your own hearts made clean, worthy to receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the other world, nor will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the future of David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet, and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and bore him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Let your right hand forever 
discussing as you walk along. They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to the sentence of death to crucify him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. And some of those went with us to the tomb and found in things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer all these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them and referred to them in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, and broke it, and gave it to them. But that their eyes were open, and they recognized them, but he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us in the way and opened the scriptures to us? They set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. And the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord.
was fading away there. Um, I, I bring myself back in, right, to pray. And, um, you know, it kind of hit me, like, the first half of Mass, when we have the readings and we have the homily, you know, it's engaging. Um, but I remember someone told me that there, and then they were, like, saying, you know, Father, it's really, you know, the back half of Mass, you know, the priest is just praying and we're not doing anything or kneeling, that I get distracted and start to daydream. And so I just kind of checked myself, and I began to be more intentional in my prayer. And I just prayed um, for whom this funeral mass was offered, and the consolation of their family, and just prayed for other people, um, you know, my priestly journey, the acts of prayers. And I also just kept call up to mind some, you know, personal prayer. And, you know, once I re-engaged the mass, once I re-engaged, um, you know, the Lord in intentional um, personal prayer, um, you know, I quit daydreaming, and, you know, I was back present present moment and to what we're celebrating. And I left that mass I'm very filled, I'm very full, because um, I truly, you know, encountered the Lord and brought him to my heart. I prayed um, you know, my petitions and also just kind of brought my personal, um, you know, heart to the Lord and life and I just kind of prayed um, and listened um, to him. And in a sense, um, that's what the mass is supposed to be, you know. The first half of the mass is the word we hear those readings, we hear that homily, and the word of the Lord, and that explanation of this word, is supposed to really climax in the liturgy of the Eucharist. It's supposed to prepare the way for those readings and homilies to encounter the Lord um, in the Eucharist. And so, in a sense, um, I kind of got distracted, you know? Um, you know, mea culpa, mea culpa. You know, I started to check out a little bit for Mass. And then once I re engaged the Lord, I was intentional in my prayer. It became a very full experience, a very you know life-giving experience. And so, you know, in our gospel today, you know, we hear the story of these two disciples um, that walked with Jesus to Emmaus. But they didn't recognize it was the Lord. And the Lord was recounting the scriptures to them. The Lord was recounting the prophets to them. The Lord was opening the word to them. And they still didn't recognize that it was the Lord. But then we heard. You know, it wasn't until the Lord went with them to their home and said that he took the bread, he blessed the bread, and he broke the bread, that then they recognized the Lord in the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist. And then he vanished in their sight, revealing to them that he remains present with us in that bread and the Eucharist. But it says, how often, you know, do we come to Mass and we miss the Lord? Perhaps because we get distracted and we may daydream and you know, we hear the homily, we heard the readings, but when we go to kneel down for the Eucharistic prayer, there's the Eucharist, and the priest isn't speaking directly to us anymore, or we're not being directly engaged anymore, it can be easy to start to, you know, float away. Um, as I experienced that Mass, I told you I went to. But it was so fulfilling for me once I intentionally re-engaged in my prayer. And that's just the, um, you know, invitation I wanted to leave us today. It's how to pray at Mass, and just that liturgy of the Eucharist, when we're kneeling and the priest is, you know, blessing the gifts, but that's the best part of the Mass. That's the invitation, the moment for us to have personal communion with the Lord. You know, those are the words we're listening to the readers and the lectors, read the scriptures, we're listening to the priest give the homily, but we get to listen to the Lord when we kneel down and when we put our hands on those railings we close our eyes and we can pray. We don't have to listen to every single word that the priest is saying. You know, back in the day, all that was anxiety. You didn't know what he was saying anyways. But you can just pray. So I just want to remind us that today, that once the, the readings are read, the homily is given, the priest comes behind the altar and he brings his hands over the bread and the wine. It's called that the priest is calling down the Holy Spirit to transform that bread and wine into the living body and blood of Jesus Christ. And that altar is time for us to lay ourselves on this altar. That we too may become more like Christ, receive his divine life, become holy. And we also offer our intentions, you know. The funeral mass, we offer our loved one on this altar that they may rise up to heaven, the heavenly host that come down and join us in the Eucharist raise our prayers back to the Father. We offer those for whom we pray, those who may be sick or ill, that they may be laid on this altar, that the very divine life of God would descend upon them, that they would be transformed.
transformed with healing graces. And we lay those for whom we pray on this altar may suffer from sin or addiction or broken hearts or wounds that, once again, the healing balm of the love of God, that wine and that oil, like the Good Samaritan had given to the man dying on the side of the road, may be infused into that person through special graces of love and mercy. They may be healed and restored and made new in the life of God. That's what we pray for in the offertory, the bread and wine are placed here. We place our petitions and our loved ones here. And they may be transformed into the very divine life of God, just as that bread and wine are transformed into that same likeness. And the priest continues to pray here, the Eucharistic prayer. And that next five and ten minutes while we're kneeling, just bring your hearts to the Lord. Whatever has been bugging you or whatever has been distracting you, maybe the very thing that God wants you to pray about. And so just be really honest with the Lord. Jesus became one of us. He's incarnational. He wants to experience our very material day-to-day -day life. So whatever it is practically that you have gone on in your life, whatever it is that distracts your thoughts or pulls you away, um, that's the very thing that Jesus wants to talk to us about. And so, if, you know, Mass is your little holy hour. It's your time with the Lord. Once the liturgy of the Word is done, this liturgy of the Eucharist is your time with Jesus. You don't necessarily have to worry about every single word the priest is saying. You can close your eyes and you can encounter the living God. Sing an offertory song, shout to the Lord. 
prayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
for joining us on social media. Please pray with me and ask the Spirit to fill communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into myself. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We've joined the second our communion song. We come to your feast number 850 in the gathering.
upon it meant to the following invocation. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption of adoption, to be gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work we have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ and baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, united with them in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Our closing song is Sing a New Song, 537. You've gathered 537.